Welcome back to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast, or if this is your first time, welcome aboard. We have quite a collective of great astrology going here with our host and teacher, Robert Glasscock. And we're putting together a series that we're just releasing every few episodes where we take a look at a sign and then we flip it and look at the shadow or the secret side of that sign. Do you realize that every sign has a secret? And Robert's going to tell us where to look. And we're going to address the second one now, the second sign in zodiacal order, Taurus. Robert? Taurus the bull. You know, everybody has secrets and vulnerabilities and weaknesses. And there are several places in a horoscope to look for those. I don't know that this is truly the shadow side in the sense of Jungian psychology, because the correlation with Jungian psychology and the shadow side and astrology is usually discussed through looking at Saturn and its sign position and house position and aspects in the natal chart for the shadows. So this is not exactly that. But it is a secret side to every sun sign that I have found it's important to know, and it's fairly, I guess, esoteric. You don't hear a lot of people talk about it, but we're talking about Taurus, the sign of the builder, the most grounded sign theoretically that there is. I love this sign. But secretly, Taurus is very, very sensitive to the group's opinion of it. They will never tell you this. And you may never even see evidence of it because Taurus tends to be, once it's set on a a goal or a project or a relationship or anything else, it tends to like to establish its groove and stay there. So it resists change, and it seems to live very independently of other people's opinions of it. And yet, underneath it, that's the thing that can can unnerve them the most and send them into silence sometimes if they are really wounded completely unintentionally by what a friend may say or what the reaction is to their piece of art or to their book or to their project or their business, they're very sensitive to the kind of social and collective community in which they live and what those people uh, think about them. They also, by nature, Taurus is a, a people person, and it tends to give everybody the benefit of the doubt without a lot of analysis or introspection. And therefore, it can set itself up to be deceived by other people simply because Taurus, by nature, is very uh, observant and aware of physical appearances without thinking about it. So that someone who comes along who is, let's say, trying to talk a Taurus into a business investment, and they look at this person and think, well, this guy's in an Armani suit, He's driving a Maserati, lives in the right side of town, and they just automatically assume he must know what he's doing. And yet, almost every Taurus at some point in life is going, going to be deceived by somebody just like that who turns out to be a phony. So that's one area of Taurus that uh, I always like to point out to them, just, just be aware. And the other side of that, the flip side of that coin, is that Taurus is also secretly want to contribute something of true and lasting value to the group. It can be in money and finance and banking and real estate and very traditional kinds of careers like that. It could be through the arts. It could be through a service, through the medical community and so on. Uh, but they they have a really idealistic side underneath it that would like it to contribute to the good of the the group so if they are successful in life and they often are uh, they will often leave a part of their estate to a significant part of it to a an organization or nonprofit that serves that need for them to feel that they have given back to the community and so and they have also a very tauruses have a very 
strong spiritual side to them, which again, maybe most people wouldn't see immediately, but it's there. Uh, sometimes it's a religious side as well as spiritual, but other times it can be spiritual and not particularly religious. Uh, but th that's where that uh, compassionate and caring side of Taurus, I think, comes from, is this awareness of the social climate in which they live and how can they make it more beautiful or healthier and so on. Now, when we talked about Aries a couple of episodes back, you mentioned a lot of 12th house characteristics because with Aries, Pisces was in the 12th house. All right, now we're talking about Taurus. So where do we connect Pisces to this? Pisces is now on the 11th house with Taurus on the ascendant, Taurus at the first cusp. Pisces is on the 11th and Aries is on the 12th. So you've rotated that, it back one one house then is what you're saying. Well, whatever sign that you're considering, you want to know what areas of life are a source of both secret vulnerability and secrets as well as renewal and hope and compassion, which is the other side of Pisces, and, and imagination and so on. So if you place Taurus on the first cusp, then the 12th cusp has Aries on it. The 11th cusp has Pisces on it. And suddenly you're directed by Pisces to go to that area because it's a very rich area for Taurus people. Friendships, for example, groups of people and the collective in general. But it can also show friends from, say, the wrong side of the tracks or even shady friends or unreliable friends. And the, the Pisces on that cusp is what makes Taurus is so acutely sensitive to the impressions that they make on the community, even though they, this is not something that they're going to acknowledge, particularly or much less wear on their sleeves, but they are. They have a real strong need, and it's a positive need, to contribute something of value back to the group. So, and the difference here is that their vulnerability is very much unlike that of an Aries with Pisces on the 12th. Aries is a very self involved sign to begin with. And so its weaknesses are not really seen so much in other people as in itself. Whereas with Taurus, um, it, it, the, the weaknesses, it, it doesn't have the, the typical kinds of, uh, as a rule, neuroses that, say, some of the cardinal, cardinal mutable signs do. But it can have a, an acute sensitivity to other people's impressions of it. Even though it may or may not change a thing that it does, it still is sensitive to, to the group in a way that really no other and it and Taurus is is actually very well positioned astrologically to do exactly what we're talking about be sensitive to what the group as a whole need does it does this town need a bigger hospital a better hospital does it need some resources for homeless people and so on and so forth it it can absolutely contribute to people's self-betterment sometimes through the art does this little community need a library uh does it need uh, an arts center there are a number of ways that taurus can contribute to the community and so it's it, it actually is is I think in a more favorable position vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Pisces than even Aries is. But that's how you do it. You look at the the sign you're talking about, place it on the ascendant, and then see using just equal houses where does the sign of Pisces fall. So we could and, say with the friends, that's where you were saying earlier that they can yeah. be more gullible, able to be taken advantage of. You know, I was just thinking too another piece of. 11th house interpretation can also include our goals and ambitions. True. Is this a way that a Piscean could maybe have some, a uh, little bit of, uh, how would I say it best? Make sure that you're being honest with yourself about what's realistic. And I think that they are by nature Pisces. Where you get with Pisces up there is they have to be a little more skeptical about other people. Because they can be too trusting. They assume that like they, everybody else knows who they are, knows what they like, and they, t and they say it. They don't, you know, they're not, they're not liars. Taurus typically is not. It's not a particularly very good liar unless it's got some 
hard afflictions in its case, in which case it can come up with Ponzi schemes like Bernie Madoff. But by nature, um, it's a pretty trusting sign. And that's what makes uh, Taurus gullible to impressionable people like that Maserati driving Armani coated guy with this brilliant business investment. He's trying to rob them of their money for. So they have to learn to cultivate a little bit more skepticism, uh, especially if money is involved. And Taurus, by nature, should be good with money. It's when they're afflicted and they're lousy with money that they run into trouble because they don't have the security, the physical, material security that Taurus really needs uh, to thrive. So we're on an elevator. I've pushed the fourth floor and I ask you, so Robert, what's the bottom line for Taurus people to manage their shadow? You got four floors on the elevator. Go. <laughs> If it sounds too good to be true, it isn't true. That would be my first and primary piece of advice to Taurus. Excellent, because we just hit the fourth floor. <laughs> That's a good little exercise, isn't it? A little quick synopsis. Hey, by the way, you know, on the on the way out. All right, excellent. This is this shadow series. We've already had really good feedback on it. So thank you for this. We'll keep walking around the zodiacal order as we go through these and just dribbling them out every couple of weeks as we record. So thank you for this great information. And we've got all the information that you need to know about contacting Robert, about participating in an extended conversation in our Discord group, all of it in the show notes. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you again on the next Old Soul, New Soul Astrology podcast with Robert Glasscock. Thanks for listening. <music>